What is going on everybody? Uh, welcome to the Warrior Soul of Goji. If you watch this channel before, then you know that I talk about issues related to health, fitness, living your best life, and Warrior Soul in general is focused on helping the US military veteran community and anybody else willing to listen to live their best lives. Reason why we do this is because over the past decade and a half of war, we've seen really high rates of veteran suicide, really high rates of veteran homelessness, and really high rates of chronic disease. One in four veterans admitted to the VA system has full-blown diabetes. And these are issues that I don't just wanna raise awareness about. I want to deliver real solutions out there so that people can start implementing them in their lives right now. Today, I wanna to talk to you about an extremely important issue and that is whether or not calories matter. Right? but particularly whether or not calories matter for your male hormonal health. Now, why is male hormonal health important? Well, your lifeblood is testosterone, and in many ways, testosterone is what's going to give you the drive, the zest for life that you have, and low levels of testosterone have been associated with depression, suicidal ideation, and a whole host of other negative health factors. So. The reason why this particular issue is important, whether or not calories matter for your male hormonal health is because, well, there's been a lot of confusion about calories over the past few years, and this has been increasingly true with the popularity of diets like the ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, the carnivore diet, and others. So a lot of people claim that the quality of your diet, the types of food you're eating, can negate the, the role that calories play in the outcomes in your body. And uh, I've been a follower of the ketogenic diet for the past six years. It's helped me out quite a bit uh, with a problem that I developed called ulcerative colitis. But I also believe that calories do in fact matter and that comes from my knowledge of how the human body works, particularly in the realm of testosterone production. So if you are concerned with optimizing your testosterone production and you are concerned with making sure that you're producing healthy levels of testosterone, calories do in fact matter. And that's because of two things that are highly related to having a testosterone deficiency. The first one is an enzyme called aromatase. And the second one is a protein called sex hormone binding globulin. So let's get into those. With the first one, aromatase, and you might have heard of this before, or you might have heard of aromatization. Um, aromatase is an enzyme that converts testosterone that you produce into estrogen. Now, this happens generally when men are producing high amounts of testosterone that they're not using, uh, and because they're not using it, their body will convert it into estrogen or an active form of estrogen. Um, and they do this, or, or, or the reason why aromatase gets upregulated up is because of a number of different reasons. One of which is because of an excess of body fat, right? So if you have a high level of body fat, or if you're produce, or if you're consuming a lot of calories, a high amount of calories, and producing a lot of insulin, then aromatase gets upregulated in your bloodstream, and in turn, you're going to be producing high amounts of estrogen. Other ways that aromatase gets upregulated is because of different types of chemicals in the food we eat called xenoestrogens. Now, xenoestrogens are highly abundant in pesticides. So if you're eating uh, a lot of vegetables that have been treated with pesticides, or if you are consuming beef that's been treated with hormones, or if you're using hygiene products that have xenoestrogens or um, petroleum-based compounds in them, then that can also raise your estrogen level. Levels. And so it's really, really important that, you know, we make sure that we're not getting a lot of xenoestrogens into our body, um, you know, from the food we eat or the products we use, but also that we are monitoring our calories, our caloric intake to ensure that we're not producing uh, too much insulin and not allowing a lot of body fat to build up around our midsections. This is why it's a good idea to keep your body to a certain degree of leanness and not allow body fat to build up. That's because body fat is not just something that hangs out underneath our skin and makes us look 
you know, fat, it's also an internal organ that produces hormones and, and different types of compounds that tell our body what to do. And in this case, body fat can produce uh, um, uh, aromatase and in lead to an increase of uh, uh, testosterone being converted to estrogen. And if you have an aromatase problem, this is something to understand. Uh, it's not something that just injecting yourself with testosterone from a hormone replacement clinic is going to fix. You need to address that body fat issue. You need to make sure that you're getting rid of a lot of those xenoestrogens. And you need to make sure that you are also, um, you know, getting good enough amounts of zinc. Zinc has uh, demonstrate has been demonstrated to keep your body from aromatizing. If you have a zinc deficiency, you're going to have much higher levels of aromatase. Um, so that's the aromatase issue, right? So you want to make sure that you're not consuming too many calories, but you also want to make sure that you're not consuming too few of calories. So the other one to consider here is sex hormone binding globulin. And when you are actually consuming too few of calories and you're not eating enough, that's when your body starts to upregulate sex hormone binding globulin. Now, what is sex hormone binding globulin? It's a protein and it binds tightly to testosterone and it makes it far less bioavailable. Right, so when you get a testosterone test, right, when you're you're getting your testosterone levels tested, what happens is you get a total T count and you get a free testosterone T count, and uh, for all intents and purposes, the one that matters more is the amount of free testosterone you're producing because if you're producing a lot of total T and all that's getting bound up by sex hormone binding globulin, then um, it's not going to be very bioavailable for you. But the free testosterone is the one that's more important for your sexual function and all the other things related to having a good testosterone level. So you really want to make sure that you are not upregulating sex hormone binding globulin by eating too few of calories. And this is why you know, I used to coach bodybuilders um, both at the professional level and at the high amateur level. When you see these guys getting up on stage after they're doing such uh, a, a crazy amount of dieting, a lot of times their testosterone levels are way down here. Their energy levels are low. Depression starts to set in, in those, past, those last couple of weeks, right? So what's a viable solution here? Well, a viable solution is to, number one, not eat like a glutton but also not eat like a bird. You have to find a, uh, a really happy medium with the amount of calories you're eating, right? You need to make sure that you're at least eating enough calories to keep up with your basal metabolic rate. And you also need to make sure that you're not eating such an abundance of calories that it's gonna lead to a fat buildup. So if you're out there and you're doing a bulk, for example, it's probably a good idea to stop bulking and to pull things back when you notice a lot of body fat um, adding up around your midsection. Um, and this is a big reason why I'm not a fan of long-term bulking, right? I, I, I don't think you should be bulking any longer than three months or anything like that. And I actually don't like doing bulks at all. I like to make sure that I'm keeping uh, uh, at least up with my basal metabolic rate. And then if I'm looking to add muscle on, uh, at least I did this when I was bodybuilder, I'd add on, you know, uh, one to 200 calories at a time. And then I would really try to make sure that I was keeping that body fat level low. This is also a big reason why I would do a lot of HIIT training, high intensity interval training, even when I was trying to add muscle to my body. And that's why I still do a lot of high intensity interval training. And I move around a lot, um, even when I'm trying to put a little bit of weight on. So Make sure that you're you're not eating like a, a, a bird, but you're also not eating like a glutton. Make sure that you're keeping your activity levels up even when you're bulking. Uh, and, you know, above everything, you know, also understand that uh, beyond calories, nutrient density and digestibility are the most important things in your diet. So if you're not digesting your um, 
your uh, your food properly that leads to inflammation and that in turn can lead to higher levels of aromatase uh, but also make sure that you know you're chewing your food and you're getting everything um, you're optimizing your digestion and that you're getting all the nutrients that you need so that's all I got for today guys if you guys have any questions about this Put them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to learn more about everything we do here at Warrior Soul, head over to www.warriorsoulagogi.com. More free content up there for you. And that's all I got. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for listening. Peace.